All right, eight o'clock in the morning. Get ready to work. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. What, what are you doing? Where are we going? Got to get the coffee in the morning. Got to get my coffee. Yeah. I, I drink the rock stars, unfortunately. Um, or He's I'll just a rock star black, guy. Black coffee. I but, need um, my coffee. Like I said, we have to get the coffee in the morning. <laughs> have to. shop this morning everything is rocking uh, we got here at 8 30 and my mom is already uh, employee of the month by the way there you go. <laughs> has already just gotten uh, finished with a, a bunch of orders here they're all cutting uh, so super excited about that and then uh, we'll get to rocking we have a couple of more jobs she has lined up in the prints and then uh, yeah all right so we're done with the paper uh, gloss on here we're switching to matte bop uh, I'm sorry gloss bop so we have a design that needs to go all the way around the sticker. We're gonna use the uh, product with the black mark on the back so we can print over the edge. That way when we remove the matrix, it's a nice clean design. This machine can be a little finicky to load and it took quite a long time to realize once you feed it into the uh, machine, it doesn't always grab it right away. So what you have to do is feed it in, wait a couple seconds and then it'll pull it forward. Um, I see it on the forums all the time. I see it from dealer support. We actually just got a message from the dealers saying this and I thought, oh my gosh, if I knew this when I got the machine, it would have helped out so much because everybody here has had the issue of trying to feed it into this machine. That is the one thing that I will say is kind of like eh, about the machine is if you didn't know that. I'm trying to look for a pair of uh, scissors. We have so many around here. Oh, here we go. All right, let me go grab this. Go ahead and cut the clean line across and then um, that way, we'll just kind of add an angle. Try and cut it as straight as possible. There you go. So it's a nice, clean, straight edge, and that way it's not crumpling. Um, got a new camera person, so this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> thank you to the number one employee of the month. Um, is that screen showing up on there okay? You can yeah. see? Okay, whenever mm -hmm. it goes black, you can just touch it and it pops up. So I usually put it on a roll. This is my cheap unwinder because for a light roll like this it doesn't really need that much uh support to unwind i do have one of these guys coming but it's been the uh rewinder but um the higher quality ones it's just been on back order forever and i've been trying to get it in so dpr if you guys have another one uh for the other machine that i'm having coming in the future let me know and i can get it from you but anyways so this guy, I avoid it if I can, just because whenever it gets low, it tends to speed up real quick and it rewraps itself around. And so it tightens the roll and it starts jumping around these uh, little gears here and it goes click, 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 click. And it just always makes me feel like it's gonna break the machine because there's little tabs and sensors in there that the media pulls on. So I avoid it. You're gonna want a unwinder, rewinder, whatever you could use, maybe just a bearing and a little rod. Uh, for the lightweight stuff. You don't want to put too much pressure on the rolls because it will end up jerking the media and breaking it actually, um, especially for paper. Uh, but I have the unwinder unit coming. I don't know if I already said that or not, but anyway, so this opens two ways in the front or in the back for the access. Usually I'll, I'll open it back here, put that guy in, and then, <laughs> excuse me, and then I'll go ahead and feed it through the front. So what you want to make sure is that it covers this little sensor switch, okay? So just slide it over, don't put it inside yet all the way, okay? Make sure the media is closed down. Pinch it, but don't make sure it doesn't like bow up or bow down. And then you just feed it until it stops and hold it there. And see how it grabbed it? That's the right way to feed it. At least that is the way that actually works damn near every time. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just give a little bit of slack and then we want to come around over here and you can see where it says paused on the screen 
you want to make sure that you're on the correct uh, registration mark. Otherwise, they'll just feed out a bunch and it'll say error, no media detected. So to change that, you would just click OK and you would go to the media type. I don't really actually worry about that. I just go to the media detect. Make sure the one you want is selected. Click OK, home. And then for it to actually properly load, you click pause, which is either pause or play, basically. You can think of it. It's a, a button that does both. And so it's going to read it and then it's gonna uh, spit out the material and read the black marks and then go from there. The key thing is always remember to feed it in and just wait for a second, wait for it to grab the, the material and then go from there. Because if you feed it in one second, two seconds, it doesn't grab and you pull it back out, it's gonna error out and it does this whole thing where there's a bunch of uh, uh, errors and it's just hard, it's, it's frustrating. So if you do that, it'd be perfectly fine. Right now it's saying the maintenance box is nearing the end of its service life. That's fine, uh, it will still work, uh, but it's already picked up what it needs to. This would be what a maintenance box is. So as soon as that's done, we'll go ahead and put this in. I always keep a full set of inks. We just put the yellow in yesterday and we're already almost at a quarter empty. So I gotta place an order for that. While I do that, I'll probably just place another set of inks and uh, maintenance cartridge because that will all be gone within a couple of days uh, for the volume I'm printing. And it is a good printer. I would highly recommend it. It's just you got to keep up on the ordering of the ink when you start printing the production we do. I'd like to save up for a new Affinia uh, L901 or L801. So Affinia, if you're watching, uh, uh, you know, reach out to us and uh, uh, we'll see if we can call you guys up with a deal or something. But uh, we'd love to host your uh, printer. What are you doing? The AC, it feels so good. <laughs> it is so hot. Uh, get out of here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it feels so good. It's like 100 degrees in here. You got a package. Okay, all right, okay. let me go check it out. Is it in the front? Yeah. Heavy lift, I'm You're sorry. on your own. I just heavy lift, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where's our uh, uh, handyman? We got hey, guess what? What? The handyman is you. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, time to get back to work. All right, so it just printed the uh, green registrations that we make to make sure it's centered. And you can see that uh, the green represents an exact two inch circle, which the labels are supposed to be. So if I go ahead and I peel this, try and do it with one hand. Um, I have my camera person on production right now, trying not to pull them away. Let me go ahead and sit this down and see if I can uh, do it. There we go, okay. So we have this here. If I go ahead and try and uh, peel this off, okay. You'll see that the green is actually pretty darn close to the edge. Um, zoom in here and there you go it's right at the edge and if you look at the matrix it's just barely on the edge there so um i think it's good to go we're gonna go ahead and send them and then they'll all be uh, on center all right you guys think i'm messing around or my wife thinks i'm messing around i come around the corner and this is what i see her and my mom joking about it's like how i feel on monday are you kidding me <laughs> come on what, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you have to say, Mom? Yeah, you guys goofing off on company <laughs> time. <laughs> coffee, coffee. Yeah. One thing that is extremely frustrating is when you're using a material, uh, you know, that doesn't really work so well. And, you know, I just had the stock left over, so I wanted to use it for this particular customer. Uh, we let them know, hey, uh, the quality is decent, you know, um, it's, they're just like to seal little packages. They didn't care. They wanted the most cost-effective price. Uh, so I'm running the rest of my stock for them, but just doing that itself, look, I mean, I'm getting crashes from that print head. It's tearing, it's crumpling, it's getting caught inside the bay, the print bay, and then it gets stuck over there. So, you know, it's like the paper keeps on jamming and it's, it's had like six crashes now. So it, it's frustrating. The only, I will say this, the only media that I have purchased that runs flawlessly through this printer is Hickman Label. I was gonna wait to do a nice little video about who I get my material from and where uh, I purchase, like where I purchase it from, but I've gotten literally 
maybe 80 or 90 emails just from the last video I posted out, please, you know, let me know uh, where, where to get it from. So I'm just gonna tell you, it's Hickman Label, okay? So the cool thing about Hickman Label is they package it really nicely and they always tell you, uh, you get some extras, uh, extras included for startup. I thought that was the coolest thing, so I start putting that on all of my labels when the customer gets it. They order in batches of 100 most, most of the time, so I put 100 labels plus extra, just because I was like, oh, you know, hey, that was kind of cool, I got that. And it's the only company that has done that, and I stole that from them. Sorry, Hickman, if you ever see this uh, video. That is awesome. So when I print my rolls and I send it to the customer, I take that little line there, and I say whatever, quantity plus extra, and I've already had tons of uh, uh, feedback from my customers saying, oh, thank you, you know, so much for the extra. Because, you know, when you peel off the sticker, sometimes uh, it gets removed, and then when it's wound on the back, you might have some uh, labels removed from there. So it's just nice to know that if you have 100 bottles and you buy a roll of 100 things that you need a label, okay, you already have extra. And uh, it varies on based on size, how many I give, but Hickman labels, uh, that's awesome. So uh, another cool note is that they label the inside of theirs. And something so simple is actually so important because we have run matte bot material when the customer just ordered paper, uh, matte paper, which is a huge price difference. Uh, so we used a higher quality waterproof product when the customer just needed a low budget uh, paper uh, product that didn't need any of the properties that uh, BOPP or polypropylene is. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer. So. When we went to Hickman, we're like, holy cow, okay, that's easy, something so simple. So we do that with, uh, uh, I mean, we use that now on the outside as well as the inside. And you can see like all of our stuff is Hickman. We've been using them pretty much from day one. And um, hopefully <laughs> this will stop the emails of everybody asking what we use. But the jamming of the other products that we've purchased has just been horrible. Like I said, you know, we've had six jams already and it's just, We've probably wasted a full roll already of the labels of the other uh, company. And we have tried a lot and it always, always seems to happen. I don't know what they do different. I don't know how they do it, but whatever Hickman Labels is doing, I mean, it's it's on point. And plus, they're the only, they are the only supplier that I've seen such a variety. You can get holographic, you know, in multiple sizes. You can get bop, you can get polypropylene, you can get craft paper, you can get clear. I mean, we have clear down here too. So this is clear, it looks exactly the same. This one, we leave the matrix off. So they actually peeled the matrix off for us. Uh, there's no price increase or difference like that. When you do, I accidentally chose to leave the, uh, oh no, no, yeah, clear, you need the registration marks because it can't detect the gap. But on some of them, uh, you can choose to leave uh, the matrix on or off and then to have black marks on or off. So they make a super, super intuitive uh, web page design. Just go on there, put the Epson that you want, that you have, put the uh, model number that you have. They already know what size to make it to, what type of ink coating it, uh, is acceptable or what type of media to send you for that ink coating. They know whether it needs registration marks or not. And those are all questions when I got this uh, printer that I was like, okay, what do I need? And it's all done on their website. So, oh, I'm just so frustrated. So I had to get this, uh, this out there. Just go ahead and use Hickman guys. Um, let's see, anything else about this printer here? So one of the big things with the printer is you always wanna make sure you have the maintenance cartridges. It goes through maintenance cartridges pretty quick. I would say through a full set of ink, you're gonna tear through the maintenance cartridge. So definitely have a backup set. It doesn't take too long to ship. I ordered through Color Label Solutions and it's free shipping. Uh, the inks are all kind of regulated on price. So they have the lowest price for the ink already as, as well as the matrix, uh, maintenance box. So. Just order through them, super simple, great guys. Um, and uh, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about this printer that I keep getting asked a lot of questions on. Let's see, I covered the media breaking because I was frustrated. And, <laughs> and then I gave you guys the uh, Hickman label. Uh, it's hickmanlabels.com. Uh, the inks, always have the inks. And then, oh, the width. The next thing I get asked, what's the width, the max width? So this one can print eight and a half inches wide. It's the C6500A, which is the cutter. There is a P, which is a peeler. It will peel the label and you can peel it out. I, I use the A because I just roll it up. 
Now the C6000, I believe is quite a bit cheaper. It might, it might be, I, I believe it's quite a bit cheaper. It does four inches in width and that also is a good option. Four inches is kind of the max that we print to, uh, which will also get you over to the finisher. Uh, they have two models of the DPR in four inches or eight inches, eight and a half inches. So we have the eight and a half inches, but honestly, we do majority of labels up to about four inches. It would be nice to have the larger one because you can put a full four inch laminate roll on it. Um, which you actually might be able to do with a four inch. You just have to be careful. If, you're, if your paper width or your media width is four inches, you kind of want to have this to be a little bit less than four inches or your media width to be over so that this doesn't laminate off of the paper. Once it aligns, it stays aligned, but you, know, you don't want to have a five inch laminate and a four inch media. Otherwise, you'll just wrap around these rollers in here and cause a whole lot of problems. So uh, I'll, leave the I'll leave the link to the label manufacturer down below and then i will leave a link to the uh to the supplier that i buy my inks from down below as well all right so one thing that is super simple that i think is awesome is when we package our products we use like a poly uh, a seal and uh, we heat seal the end so we use uh, like a four mil poly seal so it's nice and uh, thick and strong but still protects the uh, package of top one with crazy overboard on thickness and we usually have like a two inch that we first purchased on a roll which we never use i shouldn't have gotten that roll but i didn't know at the time and then we had a six inch wide let me show you what it is so this is the two inch we never use this this has been here for like a year and a half and never gone through it. The other one was always a six inch roll. And so uh, what we did now is we ordered an eight inch roll and I'm thinking that that's gonna work a lot better because most of our stickers are like six inches or less and the six inch width was too small. So we'd always have to trim it and then join two halves together or something like that. So this eight inch roll is just perfect. What do you think about it so far? What do you think about it so oh, far, me? Mom? Yeah. <laughs> She's into shipping. <laughs> Works good. Yeah, Works okay, perfect. so it's working good. There you go. Uh, so uh, this is the seal that we use, just a, a normal heat sealer. We had it eight inches wide. Uh, so I figured, hey, why not just get the eight inch wide media and it will work great. But uh, yeah, anyways, that's it for today. We have these orders uh, set up for tomorrow. Uh, my mom usually gets in here pretty early and so that way she'll just be able to fire it up and uh, go right there. Uh, everything has been running pretty smooth, super happy. And uh, I will catch you all later. Bye.